A new study has shown that rheumatoid arthritis dramatically increases your risk of Parkinson's disease. So in this video, I want to explain what the connection is between those two conditions so that if you have rheumatoid arthritis or Parkinson's disease, you can know what to do. I want to start with the basics. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune condition, and that means your immune system is attacking you. Uh, basically, you can think of it as a condition where your immune system is attacking your cartilage and your connective tissue. So the symptoms that you typically get are painful joints, swollen joints, and over time, if it gets bad enough, you can actually start to get erosion or really, you know, breakdown of the cartilage and the bony surfaces in the joints. I keep pointing to my fingers because that's a common place where people get it. If it gets bad enough, you can even start to get like deformities of the joints. And I'll put a picture here so you can see it. Now, rheumatoid arthritis is a, is a fairly common autoimmune condition. Now, the other thing we're talking about in this video is Parkinson's disease. Now, it's a little bit different. It is a neurodegenerative condition. Now, what that means is, is that there are sick neurons that die. That's basically what neurodegeneration means. And in Parkinson's disease, basically kind of what the current prevailing thought is, is that you lose your ability to make the neurotransmitter dopamine. And dopamine is made in a place in your brain called the substantia nigra. And it, th those, those neurons degenerate. And if you lose dopamine, it starts to affect circuits in your brain like your basal ganglia and some other places. But ultimately, what it creates are kind of two broad groups of symptoms. There's motor symptoms and non-motor symptoms. Now, the motor symptoms, the, most, the two most uh, characteristic are slow movement, also called brachykinesia, where people move slower than they used to, they might walk slower than they used to, and then they get a tremor. Now, in Parkinson's, you get this kind of resting, uh, sometimes they call it a pill-rolling tremor, and those are the two most common motor symptoms. The non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's that are common are pain, uh, constipation, uh, very important, but I don't have time to talk about why that's an important uh, symptom, uh, also cramping, and excessive daytime sleepiness. Uh, those are pretty much your non-motor symptoms. So what is the connection between the two? Well, uh, a great study was just done, I'll put the link down here, where they looked at tens of thousands of people with rheumatoid arthritis and compared those to people that didn't have rheumatoid arthritis. And then they looked to see, well, how many people out of these groups develop Parkinson's disease ultimately? And what they found was, was pretty shocking. Uh, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, it dramatically increases your risk of Parkinson's disease, uh, somewhere around 1.74 fold. Okay, that, that's a huge increase. And within rheumatoid arthritis, they found if you are seropositive, and I'll explain that in a second, that the, the, the risk is even worse. So seropositive means you've got the antibodies that are associated with rheumatoid arthritis. And those antibodies are called anti-CCP antibodies. But there are people that have all the signs and symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, but they don't have the antibodies. And those are called seronegative. But no matter which one you have, it increases your risk of Parkinson's disease. And if you're a seropositive, it really increases your risk of, of, of Parkinson's disease. So why would that be? Well, the connection is the immune system. So rheumatoid arthritis is clearly an autoimmune condition. There's a lot of inflammation going on. I'm gonna skip out a lot of the individual terminology, but there's things like tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-6. And guess what? In Parkinson's disease, research has shown those patients have the same elevation, the same inflammation. And so in Parkinson's, there's uh, what we call neurotoxicity, right? And neurodegenerative problems. And the, inf the immune system is, is how that's happening. So the connection between the two conditions is simply the immune system. It's like this. If you've already got a problem with your immune system, then it's more likely you're going to get another condition that also involves the immune system. I recently put up another video uh, talking about the link between Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune thyroid condition, and anxiety and depression. Well, the connection is the immune system. Same situation here. The connection is the immune system and it being uh, inflammation and autoinflammation and autoimmunity. So <clears throat> the other thing that might be going on, I'll just say this for some of you people that might have some, you know, I guess care. <clears throat> There's a process called autophagy, which kind of weird sounding, but it's basically how your um, body cleans up its own garbage. And autophagy is broken down both in rheumatoid arthritis and in Parkinson's disease. So the link is your immune system. So why would we even, uh, why do we care, right? Because if you have rheumatoid arthritis, you need to be doing something to control your immune system. If the immune system is the connection, then let's do something to regulate it. There are a lot of things you can do, and I don't know if you're doing them. I don't know if the doctors you're working with even know what to do. Here's what I would be looking for. I'd be looking for a doctor that knows 
uh, about comprehensive lymphocyte immunophenotyping. What is that? That means finding out what your immune system fingerprint is and tailoring your treatment accordingly. Now keep in mind, uh, most rheumatologists really only have a couple of things they can offer you for uh, rheumatoid arthritis. That's steroids uh, and maybe a biologic medication, but there are other things you can do. There are uh, non-pharmaceutical things you can do, but you've got to work with someone who knows what those are. Uh, and you've got to know that your rheumatoid arthritis is basically unique to you. That's that immune system fingerprint I was talking about. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do. Same thing with Parkinson's disease. I mean, can you imagine you've got rheumatoid arthritis and then you develop Parkinson's disease? Or you've got Parkinson's disease and then you develop rheumatoid? What, what a terrible combination of things to happen. So I want you to be proactive. We know the risk is there. We know it's a huge increase. I want you to find someone that understands these things that we've talked about today and can help you decrease your risk of developing one or the other, right? So if you've got rheumatoid, we want you to not develop Parkinson's. And if you've got Parkinson's, we don't want you to develop rheumatoid. But just know this, the immune system, we know that they're at play in both conditions, and that's the connection, and that's what increases your risk. There are things you can do. I've been seeing it over the last 20 years in my practice. I've worked with a lot of rheumatoid arthritis patients, a lot of Parkinson's patients, and a lot of stuff in between. The connection is the immune system. So to decrease your risk, you gotta start doing something now to regulate and modulate uh, and take care of your immune system. So you need to work with someone that understands how to do that. Okay, see you next time.